Oh, here we go. We got a marathon session going on here. We're back. We're You're back for back. part three of our epic live triple header broadcast. If you've missed parts one and part two, feel free to just scroll down after this broadcast and you can watch both of those. Um, the third catalog we're featuring is an exceptional European and toy collection. It is, once again, if we have not said it enough this evening, it is a world, world class collection. Um, these toys, they're exceptional. Um, they're in pristine condition. Um, they're, I really cannot say enough great things about them. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement. Uh, Bree, uh, my wife Nancy and I, we all went to uh, Germany and Austria a couple weeks ago to sort of promote this collection. A lot of interest. People were thrilled about it. You know, RSL, we sell a number of these toys throughout the year, and we always have, but this is by far the best single collection we've ever had of them. It was built by a collector on Long Island, a true gentleman collector that loved condition, loved the very finest and things. He actually bought most of these toys from Paul Satagurski, which is a name that maybe a lot of you haven't heard, but he was the king of... European, especially hand-painted toys in the 70s and 80s. Um, I think he passed away maybe in the early 90s. Uh, but really, this guy that built this collection was one of his big clients. And just, there's a lot of toys here that no one have ever, has ever seen. A lot of toys, especially the layman's, in boxes that, you know, no one has ever seen another one box, or if they have, maybe one or two other ones. So really excited about this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All this is being sold on Sunday morning. It is. This part of the sale begins Sunday, June 3rd at 10 a.m. EST as well. And as we stated in the two previous parts, um, if you need any more information, if you'd like to bid, if you need directions, if you'd like to contact us or anything about um, where the gallery is, just go to rslauctionco.com. And we hope to see you this weekend. And with that being said, here let's we go. go. We have more, more toys. to show you. Lots of toys. Um, lot 509. We're starting with the big parade uh, made by Lou Louis Marx. Louis Marx, one of the great American Louis. toy manufacturers. Um, so we've got the box here. I'm just going to do a panorama. There you go. I guess so that you can see all the way across here. The color is beautiful, the box is pristine. That's the big parade marching down Fifth Avenue in New York City. Excellent, excellent, excellent condition. You know, Marks, they made a number of these type of toys, you know, all of them sort of similar in construction. This is one of the rarer ones, though. As a whole infantry unit marching down Fifth Avenue again, it sort of make it to the end. It will turn and actually go up, go up Fifth Avenue then. <laughs> um, box is terrific. You know, one of the rarer versions of this toy. They made like a Lincoln Tunnel. Uh, they made like, a, I believe, a, a George Washington Bridge toy. So they made a lot of the New York landmarks, but this is the big parade. And a lot you, of interest. It is. And you can see the plane there, the detail. And for all of our soldier fans, we have some soldiers oh, here. like those soldiers. That are right up front. But um, as Ray said, um, circa 1930s, New York, New York. Um, one of my favorite cities outside of Pittsburgh. Um, but so that's lot 509. And next we're moving on to lot 521, the clown artist. And I absolutely love, love, love this. I cannot say enough about all, all of these toys and banks. This one's so neat. So it's lot 521. He, he actually does a drawing, which is the neatest thing ever. And the coloring on him condition is great and yeah it's he's in working order yep you know when i was a kid and this is one of my favorite european toys and i owned it a long time ago but i sort of got more into american toys but in here there's actually a cam that you can replace that would actually then you can see he actually draws a sketch so you would actually turn this and he actually draws so that's the sketch that he's making on there there's a number of different cams that you could put in you have to flip this out, take it out. You put it in a different cam and it would draw. He's drawing a portrait right now. Now, another thing that makes this very exceptional yes, is the box. the box. So it comes with the... A lot of these toys, you'll see them occasionally, but you know, you almost never see this toy with the original box. Great box. 
Made by an unusual German manufacturer called Vilma. What's it called again? Yes, Gabriel? this manufacturer is Vilmeter. 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 But you know, for all the artists out there, anyone that sort of likes these toys, it doesn't get any finer than this example. Really, really exceptional. No. Yes, it's beautiful. It's just, it's such a charming toy. I think it's great. Yeah, they really neat. You know, you put like a little uh, carbon lead in there. You know, that was his pencil, and he'll actually draw. There he is, sketching, sketching as we speak. Okay, so that one is once again lot five twenty one. Next, we're moving on to lot five twenty three. The man with three faces. Now again, this very interesting toy. So you wind it up, here let me show them very. So when you wind it up, it takes a little wind, it's made by Dissler. And as you see it, he has a white face, an Asian face, or that's the black face there. And then an Asian face. So it shows you sort of all the nationalities it was sort of back when the world was all coming together. There were a lot of immigrants everywhere. Uh, again, made by Dissler. And very interesting. Right. Yes. Again, on our European yes, adventure. Yes, on our European adventure with the American toy um, Antique Toy Collectors of America. If uh, you aren't a member, you should definitely check the club out. Um, we uh, were fortunate enough to go to Austria and Germany with Ulrich Schweitzer. This is his new book. Um, it's all on Dissler. Uh, he, they're the toys from 1903 until 1967. It's a fantastic book. He did they're a really great, great job, job on it. It features not only penny toys, but it has automobiles, trucks, fire trucks, airplanes, motorcycles, and all other things. But this particular toy that we're, we have in our auction, The Man with Three Faces, is featured in his book on page 67. So he is featured in here. And this book, he, it was combined of 10 major collections um, that he, you know, was able to get pictures from in all over Europe. So it's a great, um, you know, it's a great piece. It's a great reference Reference material. book on, on Dissler, great, great reference material. If you're looking, um, if you'd like one, you can purchase a copy from Yorik. Uh, just contact us either on Facebook or at some point, and we will forward you his information, and you can have a copy for your for yourself. Yep. So, so again, one of the exceptional Dissler toys here, and then again, what makes it very unique, show them the box. Yes. Because look at this box, and it shows you the three faces. They're just beautiful, beautiful toy. Tin lithographs, so these are a little later than the American toys, made mainly in the 1920s, 1930s. And it shows you all three faces there on the box. And you know, in this collection, we have hand-painted and then we have lithographed. And just if you don't know, the difference is hand-painted was actually sort of they make a toy and then they paint it by hand. Lithographed is basically a way of printing on tin. So they would print on the tin and then they would sort of die cut these, stamp them out, assemble them. They are tab, so there's little tabs that hold them together. But just beautiful condition. You know, this is one of the great, great toys. Really cool. Awesome, awesome. Man with three faces, lot 523. And if you don't have a copy because it's a brand new book of this Distler book, highly, highly recommend it. So, great job. Yep. Another week. Um, and moving on to lot 526. This is one of my favorites in this sale. It's Mr. and Mrs. Lehman. So we talk about Lehman manufacturing. Um, Let's start with the box. A lot of the toys. This was an homage to Mr. Lehman. He made a toy of himself with his wife, Martha, walking down Main Street. Walking down Broadway. And then, I don't know if there's any reference to what their dog's name was, but they have their little dog see. and he has his cane in his hand. And just exceptionally rare toy, especially with the box. Exceptionally rare to have the original dog, exceptionally rare to have the original cane, and then what really sort of sets it over, this is the activation lever. So it has a very unusual method of propelling this toy. So again, it was Mr. Lehman with his wife walking down Main Street, Broad Street, or were they Broadway? Broadway. Uh, Broadway. You can see the little Lehman logo on 
Mrs. Yes. Martha Lehman's satchel there. And then the way it works, and I don't want to work it because that's why it's so good, but underneath the satchel, under the arm here, let's move that back a little bit, Bree. Okay, you can see that little activation wheel? Okay, and then you would take this, and you would sort and of just engage it there, it. and you pull this back. And there was a gyroscopic flywheel in there that would cause her to move along, and they would actually walk down Broad Street. So that's what's sort of so interesting about it. You'll never see it with this activation lever. All these pieces usually are replaced with you know replacement parts. Um, another really interesting thing about this toy, it's sort of transitional between lithography and hand painted. Mr. Layman, he's hand painted. Mm -hmm. All the details painted with a paintbrush like you would. Mrs. Layman's dress is all lithography and her face is lithography. So it's sort of right at that transitional period where a lot of those manufacturers were going from hand paint to lithography. That's interesting. Yeah, really great example. If you're a layman collector, it's an absolute, absolute must have because it's Mr. Layman. It is. We have a lot it's of layman toys in this We sale. do, and they have their boxes, which a lot of these boxes, um, you know, I've been working with Ray for about five years now, but I've never seen them. I yeah. mean, I've seen them in books, but to see them in person is such a joy and it's so exciting. And yeah, they're all beautiful. of them have them. They're beautiful. And not only are they beautiful in here, but they're in great condition on top of that. So to exciting. see them like that, it's just, it's exceptional. So Mr. and Mrs. Layman, once again, lot 526. And next we have okay, this lot is 534, the Boxer Rebellion. Probably what's considered the ultimate in all the Layman toys, the Boxer Rebellion. This I've never owned this toy. I've had a, you know, a couple opportunities to buy it, but I've never owned this toy before. Um, it's very so, interesting, the story yeah. behind it. So, okay, um, sort of around the turn of the century, you had the Boxer Rebellion. The boxers were sort of an underground society that really did not like the fact that the U.S., England, Germany, and Russia sort of wanted to influence their country, both religiously, politically. You know, they all wanted control of China. China, one of the oldest countries in the world, they really didn't want to have any part of it. So that was the rebellion, trying to kick them out. They didn't want the Christianity in there. You know, they wanted to stay a sovereign state. Um, <clears throat> the boxer is in the middle here. All their hats, if you look at their hats, they represent those four countries. You know, and it shows it on here, and it actually, you know, you have the boxers, you have the Russians, the Germans yes. on here, and very interesting. Now, again, this toy was made in Germany, so it's from the perspective of the Western countries. But what does it say up in the, the corner there? Tossing the Heathen Chinese. Yes, toss, tossing the Chinese. So that was actually Chinese. the name of this toy, and they basically wanted to get the Chinese out and them in. Um, and this great action, so you wind it up, and there's a little activation lever here. And I don't really want to work and it. And also, we just have the box there top There he on goes. This one. That's how he goes. So it's sort of like you know, the Native Americans. Now he's tied, so he won't go off, but they actually toss him up and down. So cool. Fabulous, fabulous toy. Probably no one's ever seen it work. You might not ever see it work for another 20 years. You know, you just don't see this toy. Beautiful, beautiful condition. It's awesome. All we have is the box top. We don't we do. have the we whole don't, box. But the box top is in great condition as it is. As you can see, as when I was holding it up, um, it's still very clear, crisp. You can read the entire label, and it is obviously in working order. And as Ray said, you just do not see this toy in this condition working, such as this one. Yeah, there are probably rare layman toys, but I think. You know, generally everyone sort of considers this the ultimate of you know all the layman toys. So you know this is sort of the the pinnacle of all layman collections would be your Boxer Rebellion toy, and in this condition is just sort of unheard of. Hey, they're still tossing down there. <laughs> so he, he it agreed with us. A really really, un agreed. really unique opportunity to buy a toy like this. It really is. So that is once again lot five thirty four, and next we're moving on to lot. 560 the ski roll also with original box yeah and again not... i'm gonna start with the box which i usually do not start with the box with a toy but look at this box and the graphics of I mean, this is incredible look at this They're really incredible 
and uh, all the Lanemans, they did have numbers as well. So similar, I don't know if, you, um, if you've seen our soldier broadcast previously, but they have set numbers. So these had set numbers as well. And on this one, you can see it's set 781. But the graphics on there, I mean, you can see the snow there covering his skis. Um, and it even says it has a patent date on it, October 1st, 1929. Which when we were researching in the actual Lehman book, they state that this toy was produced between 1931 and 1941, but actually it came out in 1929. Whoop. Mm, 1929. <laughs> so that one, I mean, but in all honesty, that's beautiful. And him himself, it's even in better condition. So the ski roll. Yeah, great toy. Well, I'm a skier, so I was a skier, but I love the toy. Um, there's another toy of a um, roller skater called Primus, which we also have in the sale. But I think those two, they're great sporting toys. It is really, really unique. Yes. Beautiful condition. They really are. And once again, as I mentioned, on the box top, it says uh, 781 on the back of his skis. So I think that's kind of cool, yeah, that's too. Cool. Yeah, Layman's, uh, you know, sort of similar to some other manufacturers. Like, we do a lot with Britons, but Layman numbered all their toys. Right. So, you know, they had a catalog number, and, you know, and... That's what you ordered. And a lot of the collectors, they want to collect all the numbers of layman's. Yes. So that one is lot 560. All right. And now we're moving on to lot 551. Another exceptionally, oh, exceptionally rare toy. The low lie. And no one really knows what this represents. Maybe, you know, except for, you know, street musicians that could be found throughout Europe. Uh, the box here is what's exceedingly rare. The toy is extremely rare, but to have the combination, you know, it's just almost unheard Look of. Look at the color on that. Yeah. <laughs> almost perfect condition. In person, it's even better. It yeah. really is. It's just, in patent, um, it, it's beautiful. It has everything on it that you'd want to see. Low lies right in front of you. There. Yes, Break yes, yes. Grab that. So this one, we have the tap dancer on the right side of course and, and again sort of the unusual. accordion player i mean it sort of works like a lot of those jigging toys so layman made like the alabama coon jigger and you know a lot of those toys so similar action but you have an accordion player you have the dancer and actually you can turn them and it sort of varies his jumping there's four little holes it's like a double post mechanism so it varies his mechanism on there but, this is what Ray's know, talking about there. You can see the four holes under his feet. Very, very unique toy. Very difficult. Going to do very, very well on Sunday morning. Yes. A lot of interest in these toys. We have a lot of people coming over from Europe. You know, it's sort of going to be a unique offering. It's going to be highly, highly competitive for these toys. And again, you know, everything's sort of relative. But what's nice with a lot of these European toys, they can be very expensive. So don't get yeah. me wrong. They're going to be expensive. But compared to other fields, they're still extremely affordable. You know, so there are still a lot of great toys. You know, a lot of layman toys you can buy for four or five hundred dollars. You know, toys like this are gonna be more in the twenty thousand range. Uh, but compared to like the mechanical banks and some of the other cast iron and American toys, still a very affordable, collectible. Uh, you know, a lot of people can participate. Uh, they made larger numbers than a lot of their right. old toys. So they are out there, but, you know, low lie, probably under 20 of them known. You know, so very, very rare toy. It is a rare toy. Yep. Beautiful. Just gonna, makes me want to tap dance, right? <laughs> yeah, let's see that. Not tonight. <laughs> Maybe at some point, but not tonight. Um, all right, so next we have lot 592, the two horse yeah, so not all the toys that we have from this collection are European. This is a beautiful example from a famous collection, the Louis Hertz collection, which is one of the ultimate provenances, made by George Brown. This is a clockwork two-horse jockey, large scale. They also made it with a one, or one horse. Uh, this is the more desirable because it's bigger with two horses. Beautiful condition for an American toy. Uh, they really don't get any finer than this. Uh, great form, great action. You know, the kid's toy, you'd wind it up, put it on the floor, he'd roll off. But just really a great example of American tin toy. It is. All original, no repaint, no touch up. No. You know, what do you want? Yes, all original, beautiful American toy. Yep. It'd be a great addition to any toy collection. That it is. That's for sure. And 
Next, we have lot 597, our military 10 pins. Yeah, now we only have three of the 10 pins. We have all 10, but we're only gonna show three. Showing three, but, yes. But you know, this, they call them 10 pin, they call them a Skittle set. Uh, basically, it was sort of like lawn bowling. So you would set these up, it had a little wooden ball, you would throw, and it's mm -hmm. just like bowling. You try to knock them down. You knock them you'd down. You sort of set them up in a triangular fashion. Uh, this came from a famous collection, the Barney Baron Holtz collection. This actual example was pictured in his book. Um, really, really an incredible set. You great detailing, paper lithographed on wood. You know, they would stand up and you would knock them down and sort of to put it over the edge. Yes. If that wasn't enough, coming from the Baron Holtz collection, yeah, like this. we also have the original box. The box. How do you like that? So the military ten pin. And it's something captain. you just don't see. Gorgeous, gorgeous toy. Um, if you like sort of American folk art, you know, really ultimate piece there. That's great. So, so we have about I think of fifty or sixty American toys in this collection, and then we're going to end the day with a lot of German hand painted tin, I believe. Yes. Um, next we have a uh, lot 622 Donald Duck. Oh, well, before we got to the hand painted, oh, before they then we do have some other, we have like some Kobe toys, which are like Japanese toys, some Shuko toys. Yes, uh, this was Shuko. This is Shuko. Donald Duck with, with the his original box. box. A lot of boxes. I know. Lots of boxes, but so great wind condition. Him, give him a little wine there. Show the people what he does. All right, he talks. It's Donald. Yeah. He's quacking at you. He's quacking. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. But, you know, a German toy with an American license, uh, difficult to find. You know, you don't see this too often. No, you can and see. And it's a little larger scale than a lot of the Shukos. But, you know, just we wanted to show that we had some other things in this, in this sale. Yeah, so there are some nice Shukos. And there's another, another one of the Shukos that I would like to note that... Um, is one that stands out to me is the juggling clown. I really like that one. I like the little clown. He's a nice yeah, one. I think we have what thirty or forty Shuko yes, toys. Yes, easily. So we have a lot of Shuko to offer as well. And next uh, we have lot six thirty seven, which is Mama Piggy. Where is little Mama Pig? I'd show probably the most impressive part of that. Yeah, is the box. We know Once again, that the Bree box. loves little pigs. I love I love pigs for those of you who <laughs> don't know. <laughs> Weirdly, but um, yeah. So this is the box. And this is the pig with the little baby pig. Aww. Isn't that adorable? So cute. You know, hand painted Guntherman. Uh, the graphics on the box are really exceptional. This toy is really exceptional. She raises and lowers the baby. Her head sort of moves forward and backwards. You know, you just don't see these toys in this kind of condition. No. Just really, really an exceptional example. Very rare, exceptional example, yes. That's so for sure. if you don't get a real pig, Bree, this could be your little pig. <laughs> Someday, I'm hoping. Maybe. We'll little, see. Little we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Pig. <laughs> uh, next, we have lot 643. The Magician, which was also made by Guntherman. Yeah, look at that. Uh, one of my toys, I, I was an amateur ma magician in my youth. Never <laughs> let's very see some, good. Let's never, see some of those Never tricks. very good at it. I think he's better. But basically a disappearing head trick there. <laughs> you wind it up, the head goes down, he opens it up, nothing's there. And it comes back up and the head's there. But, you know, just really... Beautiful condition. This actually has the original box, but there's nothing really interesting about the box. This is a cardboard Ooh. box, no label or anything like he that. Disappeared on but us. But just a great, great example. It is great, great example. I love that. It's great. What's better than What's better than some magic? Nothing. A little magic. We love magic. <laughs> so is a magician. And we have lot 645, which also we're gonna follow in suit of what we've been doing all evening. We have the original box. Yeah, look at the graphics on with this, this one. Now this one, our partner Steven, he went to Toy Mania last week in Paris and he was displaying this toy there. And you know, they were just going crazy over it because you just, you might see the toy every once in a while. The box is just incredible. And then show the toy, all original. It is. I mean, and look, all the corners. I mean, there is 
It's in it's pristine condition. It really is. But show them the toy. Yeah, that's what's really... Look at this. I mean, all original. There's no touch up on that. There's no repaint. That is as fine a German hand painted toy as you will ever see. Just truly exceptional. So that little woman dancer, you know, they made a lot of these different type of toys, but you know, what makes this one just head and shoulders above everything else is the condition. Beautiful condition. Yeah. All in working order as well. So that one was lot 645. And next we have the um, lot 648, the mother pushing her children. Probably one of the toys the that pram. garnished the most interest, just because no one's ever seen this toy. We have two toys sort of of this nature in the sale. Um, all original, so no touch up, no repaint. Just a very unusual concept. Great scale, measures almost 10 inches long. Um, sort of an African-American woman pushing her two children in a pram. They have like jockey hats on with jockey whips. Uh, I don't really know and none of my colleagues really know what it means or, or what it was for, but just an exceptional form. Again, no touch up, no repaint. Just a very, very unusual toy. Very rare. And I, I absolutely love the color of her dress. Yeah, the whole thing, you know, the big bonnet dress and just, you know, their caps. I mean, sort of very strange looking caps, but... They are. You know, something that Guntherman put together. It's sort of exceptional. It's great. It's fantastic. I love that. Okay, so that one is, like I said, 648. And next we have lot 649, the Maypole Dancers. Yeah, Bree and I had a unique experience <laughs> with this. This toy... Yeah, unbelievable. So Maypole dancers. And again, on our little European trip, we happened to be there for beginning May of May, May Day. And we actually got to see you. We were at a terrific party. Yes, and thank you, Martin. Yeah, thank you, Martha, Martin, Martin and Ava. Uh, a beautiful party. And they actually erected a maple, which they do there. Looked almost very similar to this, but they had like a big wreath at the top. And... Um, they went down in the yard and, you know, very tall, sort of raised it up. And I guess sort of part of the folklore is, so you raise the maypole, but then during the night, your neighbors might come and try to steal the maypole. So it's sort of like, it, you know, it's a tongue-in-cheek type, type thing. But, you know, just we actually got to see it in action. Yes. And this is the toy version of it. See, it has little ribbons yes. around it. They go around. Oh. Exceptional toy. Completely original. Uh, comes from a very famous collection. So cool. Yeah. I, lo I love this toy. I love it. I think it's Look great. Look at it go. Really nice. Great, great, great. That could be yours. Could be. This is lot 649. And for our grand finale, we're going to... We got the granddaddy. We're going to bring up the super deluxe mm. Ferris wheel here. Hey, by Dawn C. Lot 669. So Look is, at this toy. <laughs> How awesome is that? Look at that? So cool. So this is a steam toy, but you can also operate it by hand. So you would turn this wheel, and the Ferris wheel would go around. You could actually hook this up to a steam engine. So they made a lot of steam engines. Put a band around here, and it would actually run off of steam. But, you know, a very deluxe example of this toy beautiful condition it is um, just exceptional you know showstopper sort of you don't have to collect a lot of toys you know you want one great toy put this on the shelf you know your neighbors and friends will come over and just think it's the greatest thing they ever saw it is who doesn't like a ferris wheel i agree makes me want to go to a carnival and have some funnel cake yeah <laughs> but with that being said you're not gonna believe it ray <laughs> but that's it we made it <laughs> we made it through. That was a lot of toys. That is it. <laughs> no more sets. You don't want to do one more. Uh, I no. <laughs> no more. Not well. Not tonight, anyway. Not tonight. No, we'll, be we'll be back. Don't yes. you worry about that. Um, 
Yes, that's it. Uh, we are so, so incredibly excited for this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you are anywhere near the New Jersey area, Lebanon, New Jersey, White House Station, highly, highly recommend uh, stopping by the RSL Auction Gallery because the auction, it's just going to be epic. It's epic. There's no other word to explain it. I am beyond excited. Yeah, no, it's going to be terrific. So if you're anywhere close by, you should stop in. Uh, if you can't, make sure you give us a call. We'll set you up however we can, whether it's bidding by phone, whether by bidding by internet. Uh, but, you know, again, it's a really unique opportunity. I mean, we might say that a couple times before, but these three collections, you know, we haven't had to sell this good in 10 years. So it's really a, a great opportunity to add something very special to your collection. It is. It's world class. And um, on top of the auction, if you missed our mini announcement earlier, um, this Saturday at noon, we're releasing the Dr. Z exclusive interview, um, which was in part two of our videos that we just featured. So you can check that out on Ray and Brie Live. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of our Facebook videos are archived on there. And we also have adventures that are, you know, fun and we get to chat with collectors and travel and it's awesome so yep. um and also wanted to give a shout out to the sbcca convention um the still bank collectors club of america that's coming up next weekend so we will be there as well so we hope to see you there shout out to chuck meeks who has been uh, hard at work organizing all of that and we will see you at the lafayette haunted hotel i hear there's a ghost that's looking for you <laughs> I don't know about that. Someone, I hope not. Someone's that's afraid scary. of ghosts. And that hotel's haunted. I hear there's that's, lots of ghosts in there. That's a little scary. Someone's going to be knocking on your closet. But anyways, <laughs> we'll see you in Marietta next weekend. And um, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said, we hope to see you this weekend. For more information, rslauctionco.com. Place your bids, call us, email us jump on the website and um, if you miss parts one and part two go watch them now and uh, happy collecting thank happy you collecting everyone enjoy